are so blessed today. God has such good things for you. Lift up your eyes. You're looking at circumstances and you're thinking, oh, well, yeah, look at this. But get your eyes up on him. Abraham lifted up his eyes and that's when he saw the ram caught in the thicket. If you don't lift up your eyes, you're not going to see the ram that God has for your day. That's a special promise for you today. Lift up your eyes. And today some of you are saying, oh, I'm depressed. I'm down. Why? Because you're looking at your circumstances and what's around you instead of lifting up your eyes and seeing what he has for you in the circumstance. Sarah, we got a hot testimony We here. do. This is from Wendell. Wendell got on our website and left, a, and left a testimony for us about depression. He was feeling depressed and absolutely brutalized from depression, but he praises God now because the depression he was feeling is totally gone. And his son called him, Wendell, to let him know that God had helped him to find a job. And that's just like God, just like God. It's like he brings you out of one thing and then just multiplies it and makes it even exactly. bigger and better. That's totally exactly. like God. Exactly. When you think about uh, fear and depression, Mom, who's a good example in the Bible? Well, I like Gideon because I think he's one of the most full of fear men mm -hmm. I ever read about in the Bible. And mm -hmm. I love the process of God bringing him out of his fear. So mm -hmm. as you watch today, you say, well, I'm in fear and depression. Well, let's watch the process because usually we want to snap our fingers and be 100% mm -hmm. well overnight. And most of the time there is a process involved. So when you look at Gideon, he is in a bad circumstance. I mean, if you lived with Midianites, they were pressuring you, burning your mm -hmm. crops, killing your women, your children. Actually, you know, historically, they say that the people, the Israelites, would dig holes in the ground mm -hmm. to live in to keep from being killed. Yep. And he's in a cave or in a dark place threshing out a little grain for his family. Yep. And of all things... What happens? Well, an angel comes, but just even describing it a little yes. bit more, because the Midianites, it says, they came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. I mean, it was absolute, complete. They wanted to obliterate and control and dominate this land and dominate the Israelites. And so when you see, when you're first introduced to Gideon, Mom, he's hanging out in a little uh, wine press. Right treading out and he's hiding. And right. the reason he's hiding is because the Midianites kept taking all of the food and he's stealing right. everything. And he's trying to stomp some out so they have a little bit of food. And I love when he's down there because this is an angel that comes to him. <laughs> and and it's amazing because he's like, mighty man of valor. And <laughs> Gideon's know, like, the who? And he's looking around yeah. thinking there's somebody who else down here with to? me. Because that's not me. Look at, look at what's going on yeah, around I'm here. I'm scared out of my mind. Yeah. I'm so scared that I'm hiding in this yeah. wine press. And I love this because, ah, it's so fantastic. Gideon is honest, honest, honest. Because he says back to him in verse 13, this is Judges 6, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And mom, we have people who are watching right now right. who are saying, you're saying the exact same thing. If God is with me, Sarah, then why? 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 And you can go down your list. You're doing it in your mind even right now. You're like, well, then how come this? How come I lost my job? How come this happened? And, and you're doing it. You're doing mentally. You're making your little list out. And you've gone through this list on more than one occasion. And you've presented it to God. And you're like, why? Why, 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 why? And in some ways, it's almost like you're interrogating God. And, and you're using those things. This didn't happen. This didn't happen. This didn't happen. This didn't happen. And you're letting those things control your behavior. And they're, they're, you're letting those things make you small and fearful and live in a dark, quiet place and not be out and effective and, and accomplishing something for the kingdom of God. That's exactly what was happening with Gideon. But He's, I, why is all this going on? But I love how the angel responds yep. to him. Yep. <laughs> he says, Gideon, you mighty man of valor, you're going to con you and God are going to conquer mm -hmm. the Midianites. And Gideon gives him all this, mm -hmm. oh, I'm depressed. Where is God? God has and, abandoned us. Yeah. And the angel says the mm -hmm. same thing to him again. Get in, mm -hmm. you mighty man of valor. Okay. I want to bring out something here. God sees things and calls things that are not as though they are. Mm -hmm. Because he's certainly calling Gideon a mighty man of valor and nothing out of his mouth says that. Mm -hmm. Nothing out of his actions say mm -hmm. that. And I want to encourage you that God sees you today in the plan and destiny he has for you. He doesn't see you uh, a chicken, depressed, 
fearful. He sees what he can make you. Mm -hmm. Does that encourage you? And I want to encourage you to call us and just leave your name and quick need of a fear maybe that is in your life that is just really oppressing you because I can understand why he would be afraid. But I can also understand that God loves to show up and show off mm -hmm. for the occasion. And this is what God said to me, Sarah, and I believe he's saying it to you. Why do, why do I have to have these crises? Why do I have to have these traumas in my life? And God said to me, these are my opportunities to show how big I am to you. Mm -hmm. And so could it be that this was the opportunity for God to show up and show off to get in and make him what he saw him as? Mm -hmm. You know something too, Mom, something really important. Yeah. When we live in fear, we live in the past. Yes. And you look at what Gideon said, if God is with us, then why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, didn't the Lord bring us out of Egypt? It's the past. Look at what God did. How come he's not doing that now? Look at what happened. And fear makes you live in the past. You say, well, that happened yesterday, but I can't. And, and faith lets you live into the future and lets you know, ah, oh, God's got good things for me. But fear controls your, your future by dominating your past. And you may be watching right now and you're like, that's absolutely the truth. These bad things happened to me and now I'm living in fear because of them. I don't want, I don't want to make decisions where it's going to make it even worse or, oh my goodness, I don't want that to happen again. And you're letting fear dominate and control your decisions. We want to pray for you. Get on the phone right now. We want to pray for you. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website and say, pray for me. I'm being controlled by fear. And you know, Mom, when I was growing up, do you remember when I was in, in uh, college? I remember I came home from college yeah. first semester, at the end of first semester, my junior year, going to a good school or, or, or Roberts University, doing pretty well in school. My grades were good, but I remember when I came home, it had been a very, very difficult mm -hmm. semester. I mean, it was just brutal. I had taken a lot of hours, had a lot of responsibilities, and I came home wasted. And not because of, oh, are you being a bad place? I just had a lot of responsibilities and, and just put too much on myself. So when I got home, I, I thought, you know, I'll, re I'll relax and I'll get rejuvenated. And the longer I was home for, for Christmas break, the worse I got to where I finally came to the point where I was like, I am not going back to school. I'm, I'm going to go back to CSU, Colorado State University, but I'm not going back. And I remember sitting down and, and being making that mind up, making that decision in my mind, saying, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. I remember Dad sat with me in the kitchen and crying and sobbing, and I'm pouring my heart. He's like, why are you, why are you so adamant that you don't want to go back? I said, I'm just not going back. And just having an emotional breakdown. You know, I was like 20 and I'm having, emo and I'm not an emotional person, but I'm having this breakdown. And dad says to me, I know why you're so upset about this. You're afraid. You're afraid to go back. You're afraid to face, face some of the hardship, face some of the difficulty. And if you run, and he said this to me and it's still, I play it in my head today. If you run from fear now, it will chase you for the rest of your life. And I remember that put some grit in me. I thought, I'm not going to be a victim of fear. Come hell or high water, I'm not a victim of fear. And I remember driving back to school and it was everything. Almost had to like strap the car into go mode. I'm going to do this and gut my way through it. And I did. I did. And some of it I didn't do with God's help because I tried to just willpower my way through it. And I made it. Obviously I made it. But but if you will integrate God into your situation, some of you are listening and watching right now and you're thinking, man, fear has controlled me and I can totally relate. It's controlled my decisions. And some of you, fear has dominated your life from a very small child. And it's dominated your decisions. It's dominated your worldview. It's dominated the way you interact with people. You're insecure. You don't speak your opinion. You don't voice. Sometimes you're passive aggressive even because of fear. It controls you. God wants to set you free from fear. God set Gideon free and he wants to set you free as well. And at the end of our time, Mom, let's pray for people oh who are under the domination of fear. We must. Because that's not God's will. No. At and all. If, I want to look a little bit at the process yeah. of how yeah, you came do, out. Do, do, do. That's important. One of the things Gideon did, and I love this, he went and tore down the idol to Baal. Mm -hmm. Do you have false idols in your life? Yeah. You need to repent of them and tear them down. Mm -hmm. And it won't make you popular because when he tore down that idol, the next morning, you know, they said, who did that? We worship Baal. Mm -hmm. And somebody said, well, Gideon did it. They said, Gideon, mm -hmm. we're going to get him. So when you start to walk out of your fear, 
you'll, you'll do something that's kind of radical. Right. So expect to do something radical. I'm going to get rid of this in my life. I'm going to throw this out the window. I'm not going to watch this. I'm not going to read this. I'm not going to be involved mm -hmm. in this because a lot of your fear is bound up in your disobedience mm -hmm. and in the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. So he gets in trouble for that. But I love what they said about him. They said, we're not going to call you Gideon anymore. We're going to call you Jerubbaal, which means Baal's going to get you. Mm -hmm. And so, and that's the fear that will come to you. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, they're going to get me for this. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. But Gideon faced that fear, Sarah. And mm -hmm. then, oh my goodness, I love this. It said the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he got spirit filled. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't give anything for mm -hmm. the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. How many times have I been scared out of my mm -hmm. wits sometimes in countries that I could get killed mm -hmm. or even to witness to somebody and prayed in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that Spirit-filled anointing, and actually this anointing is so special, it clothed him. It's like the anointing Jesus said, you shall be endued mm -hmm. with power. It's like putting on a coat. Right, and it covers all of mm -hmm. your negative stuff. And so here he is endued with power. He's clothed with an anointing. Oh my goodness, he is clothed with an anointing of the Lord to do what he's to do. And then the last thing, and we're going to take a little break here. Oh, but I please call in. If you are a person with fear, name your fear today. It's important. The last thing is that he built an altar to God. Mm -hmm. So he didn't just tear down Jerubbaal. Mm -hmm. He built a fresh altar, a fresh commitment to mm -hmm. God. And it said, God gave him peace. Jehovah Shalom. Mm -hmm. So three things here. Tear down the false altar. Get spirit filled and build an altar to God. He will give you peace that's beyond your understanding and take you through. I tell you, what does God have in this next half of the program? You stay right there. Fear is perhaps the oldest emotion known to mankind. However, fear is not always a bad thing. Fear is a natural response to real or perceived danger. Fear becomes unhealthy when it controls our behavior and keeps us from doing positive things. Fear is the root of anxiety and phobias, and if we don't deal with it early, it can get a stronghold on our lives. Deborah Smith Begay is a best selling author, Bible teacher, speaker, and a certified behavioral consultant specializing in understanding personality temperaments. Deborah's writings have the unique ability to address readers from all social, racial, and economic strata. For your gift of $20 or more, you will receive Deborah's book, 30 Days to Taming Your Fears, and Marilyn's powerful teaching CD, Fear Not. We will also send you a scripture confessions card with 12 powerful scriptures that are promises against the spirit of fear. Conquer fear and reverse its damaging effects today. Call or click to receive this very special offer. talk about fear, it is exceedingly important, just tremendously important that we have the Holy Spirit and He's an integrated part of our lives. But when we look at, at Gideon and you can totally see the Holy Spirit comes on him and He's anointing him. But sometimes I just think this is so magnificent, Mom, and here's mm -hmm. why, is because you can have some really tremendous experiences with God and still be scared out of your exactly. mind. Exactly. And uh, Joyce oh. Meyer says this, do it scared. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I like that's that. absolutely <laughs> true. I like that. Just do it scared, but just do it. Just do it. <laughs> and that's Gideon. Gideon's <laughs> like that. He's like, well, I know the Holy Spirit's come on me and that's awesome. And he calls a bunch of people to follow him. You know, we're going to go do something. But then you see him kind of do this. He makes three steps forward, two <laughs> steps back. <laughs> three steps 
comes forward and he calls all these people. That's great. And then in chapter six, verses 36 down to uh, verse 40, he does this fleece thing. And he says, God, if you will save Israel by my hand, like you promised, then let's just test this a little bit. <laughs> and he does yeah, the I really fleece. Hear from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, if you're really, really going to do sure. this, let me, let, let's do this. Let's make a test. And so he puts the fleece out. He says, if you're going to do this, then make the fleece wet and the ground around it dry one night. And then another night, he does it the opposite. Make the ground around it wet and the fleece dry. Now a fleece is like a, a fur, like a, a skin of an animal, you know, like a goat or a, a sheep fur that's been spread out. And uh, God does exactly what, what Gideon asks. And I love that because God says, look, I'm going to meet you where you're at. You may be scared. If you're in a wine press and you're scared, I'm going to meet you there. If you're tearing down an altar in the middle of the night, and I love that about Gideon, he didn't do it in the daytime in front of everybody. He snuck out at nighttime when nobody was around, nobody's awake. And in the morning they woke up and they're like, oh, and then he's doing this whole fleece thing, you know, and he's making progress a little bit at a time. And that's what we do when we overcome fear. Sometimes we want this Shazam, home run, bang, out of the ballpark, victory over fear, when really sometimes it's just minute by minute, step by step, moment by moment. I remember when I was driving back to ORU and I had my hands on the wheel and there were times when I could physically feel myself wanting to pull off or turn around and I was like, no, you're not. And I even physically talked to myself, you're not doing this. Keep going, you can do this, keep going. I remember putting on headphones, praying in tongues, you're gonna do this, you're gonna make it. And it even became mile by mile. Sometimes I'd even check off the miles. Okay, well, we're at now 378 and then, oh, there's 379. And sometimes <laughs> it's just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. But you know, mom, after he does this fleece thing and God confirms to him, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do like I've said, then he calls a whole mm -hmm. boatload of people. What happens after well, that? Well, he called and got 10,000 people. And you yep. know, that kind of, uh, if you have a lot of people for you, mm -hmm. that you kind of look to the people to remove your fears. So, oh, mm -hmm. I've got all these people with yep. me. And then God says, okay, go down to the river and everybody who puts their face in the water to drink, he said, send them home. And mom, yes, he had thirty-two thousand people. Okay, I'm th then it yeah. went to ten thousand. Yeah, because right. he sent twenty-two thousand. Right, home. he's like, you got way too many. <laughs> right, <laughs> and then after that, you know, he has ten thousand left, mm -hmm. and then God narrows it down to three hundred people, mm -hmm. because you know why? God wants our confidence to be in Him, mm -hmm. and this is a little frivolous thing of fear, but I want to be a witness to my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We have ten families in my neighborhood. And, you know, I know they see us, they know we're Christians. And so my next door neighbors, I have felt like that they kind of looked down on us, were kind of goofy kooky. And so I just thought, Lord, I pray for my neighborhood, but I don't know about talking to them. So I'm praying and I have a fear of them and, and they're more sophisticated. You know, she's out in the yard drinking wine and I, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? I just don't. And so I'm pulling out and she, I said hello to her and she said, you're all dressed up. Where are you going? I said, well, I'm teaching a Bible study. Oh, she said, would you have the Bible study? Pray for my grandson. He is a very serious diabetic. And that opened the door. Mm. So I said, do you like ice cream? Yes. I said, would you and your husband go out for ice cream with me? I have a real beautiful open door. But that fear, well, they don't like me. Mm -hmm. And when you only have 300 people, mm -hmm. and then of mm -hmm. all things, Gideon is really afraid. And so God says to him, well, send your servant up and listen to what the Midianites are mm -hmm. saying about you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the servant goes up and he hears this conversation. Now imagine God defining all this and putting this mm -hmm. in such divine order. Mm -hmm. And this servant Midianite soldier is talking to another friend and he says, uh, I had a dream last night. Really? What'd you dream? He said, I dreamt that a barley loaf of bread came tumbling mm -hmm. down the hill and knocked down all our tents. Really? Do you think that has a spiritual meaning? He said, yes, I think it's Gideon. He's going to win. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when the devil says you're going to win, mm -hmm. it, maybe it's time for you to believe that. Yep. <laughs> and that did it for Gideon. Mm -hmm. And then I want to pray with you about this. Gideon got a revelation of how to win. And I believe there are revelations that can come to us if we'll stop and listen to God for the occasion, like my neighbor taking mm -hmm. them for ice cream. I think if we'll stop, and the revelation God said was, take pictures, put lamps in them, swords, trumpets, mm -hmm. and this is what you say. 
So he takes these 300 men with pitchers at night and they put the little lamp inside. They have the trumpet, they have the sword. They surround the camp of mm -hmm. the Midianites and then Gideon said, I'll tell you when to say this. And Gideon, totally out of fear, totally he's come out of fear. He says, now everybody say the sword of the Lord and Gideon. Gideon. And that's mm -hmm. what the angel started with him. Mm -hmm. You, Gideon, and God will win. Mm -hmm. And he says that now himself. And so they break those pitchers, the light springs up, they mm -hmm. blow the trumpets, and of course they hear all the crashing, the Midianites, and the Midianites ran off, mm -hmm. and Gideon won. Mm -hmm. And you know, he was called Jerubael, Baal's gonna get you, but later they call him Jerubasheth, which means the Lord hath put to shame. Mm -hmm. We can walk in faith, it will put the devil to shame, mm -hmm. and we don't have to have fear. Sarah. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. People are desperate out there. Mm -hmm. I, I hate fear. It's really ugly. I, let's pray. Let's do And you know, Mom, just to finish yes, this up. Yes, please. Gideon had 300 men, and they defeated more than 100,000. Midianites. More than 100,000 with 300 men. That means each man for Gideon mm -hmm. defeated an average of 450,000, no, 450 soldiers against him. I mean, if you do that, averages averaging, <clears throat> it's amazing. But you're watching right now. We want to pray for you oh my. that you're not going to be controlled or dominated nope. or victimized nope. by fear, but rather you're going to be victorious over fear and you're going to dominate fear and you're going to absolutely walk into the destiny that God has for you. Let's pray right now. Father, I pray for each person watching who is struggling with fear. I speak to this fear in the name of Jesus. I command you to leave. Stop harassing this person. You must stop, leave, and desist now in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I pray that this person would identify the fear and, and refuse to listen to that voice, refuse to listen to that negativity, refuse to follow and obey that, but that they would be turned in, tuned into your voice and not the voice of a stranger. Thank you, Father, for setting them free from fear to walk in your victory and your destiny for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And you know, you can get on the website right now and you can say, pray for me, keep praying for me. I want to be free from fear and maybe you want to list what it is, you know, free from the fear of failure, fear of being alone, fear of something from your past, fear of, of, of being bankrupt, fear of losing your home, fear of, of losing your job. There's all kinds of fears. I don't need to give you any more than what you already have, but maybe you want to list those and say, pray for me that I would be set free from these. And you know, it says in, is it mom, first or second Timothy, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but, but of power, power love, and, love and, and a, a sound, sound mind. mind. I think yes. it's second Timothy I one seven. Right. And I want to encourage you. That's a verse that you need to speak to your fear and say, God didn't give you to me, but he's given me power, love, power, love, and a sound mind. We used to sing that in Sunday school and we do all the actions, power, love, and a mm -hmm. sound mind. I know it sounds corny, sounds cheesy, but sometimes those cheesy corny things really help us to live out in victory. So I want to encourage you, get on the phone, call. We want to pray for you, continue to pray for you. It's very important that you are not victimized by fear, but that you are victorious over fear. Get on the website, tell us how we can pray for you. And just like Wendell did at the beginning of our time, we talked about Wendell and him getting set free from depression. You can also leave us a praise report as well. We love to get your praise reports. It encourages other people, not just us, but you are encouraged by Wendell and his testimony at the beginning of our program. Well, give us a testimony of what God is doing in your life. And especially those of you, God is setting you free from fear. You're like, yeah, that's absolutely right. And remember, sometimes it's a little bit at a time. Progressions, and you're not the same. You're not as bad as you were yesterday, but you're, not, you're gonna be even better tomorrow. So you're making steps. We're walking into victory. We're walking out of fear, and we're living in the victory that Jesus purchased for us today. Fear is perhaps the oldest emotion known to mankind. However, fear is not always a bad thing. Fear is a natural response to real or perceived danger. Fear becomes unhealthy when it controls our behavior and keeps us from doing positive things. Fear is the root of anxiety and phobias, and if we don't deal with it early, it can get a stronghold on our lives. Deborah Smith Begay is a best-selling author, Bible teacher, speaker, and a certified behavioral consultant specializing in understanding personality temperaments. Deborah's writings have the unique ability to address readers from all social, racial, and economic strata. For your gift of $20 or more, you will receive Deborah's book, 30 Days to Taming Your Fears, and Maryland's powerful teaching CD, 
fear not. We will also send you a scripture confessions card with 12 powerful scriptures that are promises against the spirit of fear. Conquer fear and reverse its damaging effects today. Call or click to receive this very special offer. such an awful, awful thing to experience and to try and work around. I think about some times when I was afraid when I was growing up and things that I've feared that weren't necessarily true or accurate or stuff that you just kind of like, wow, that makes me scared. And, and I really don't believe in any way, shape, fashion, or form that God wants us to be afraid. I remember when I was in college, my dad confronted me one night and he said, you know, Sarah, you're afraid. And if you run from fear now, it will follow you for the rest of your life. And clearly that was a very defining moment for me. It was coachable. My dad was awesome and God totally used him to help me. But I know that fear, God doesn't want us in any way, shape, fashion or form to be controlled or absolutely manipulated or dominated by fear. So if you're struggling with fear, why don't you get on the phone, get on the website. We would love to pray for you. And you know, Mom, I know there's some good verses that speak to fear. Remind us of what some of those verses well, are. Jesus said, fear not, you know, for I'm with you. You know, so I think speaking to the fear itself is good. I'm not going to be afraid of fear because I have Jesus in me, the hope of glory. He that's in me is greater than he that's in the world. Speak to the fear. But I want to address this too. The fear of God is the beginning of right. wisdom. So to fear God and not to be lawless in this day, so many people don't fear anything. They don't fear leadership. They don't fear p policemen, nothing. But the fear of God's leadership and who he's put in place is the beginning of wisdom. But today, if you say, oh, I have so many fears, I'm just overwhelmed with fear. Or I have loved ones who are just, oh, we're just caught in this terrible, terrible struggle of fear. Call us. We would just love to pray with you because we can come against fear. We can break the power of it in Jesus' name. Call right now.